This is lesson 2.4, multiplying real numbers. You should be on page 88. The first thing we want to address today when multiplying real numbers is the sign of a product. In other words, remember, product is multiply. This, what is the correct sign when we're working out these problems for our answer? Okay? So there's two scenarios that can come up. If you're multiplying numbers, as you can see here, that have the same sign right here, like 3 times 4, the answer would be 12. If you have the same sign in the problem, the answer is always positive. Here would be another example. I have the same signs in my problem, negative 6 times negative 3. If the signs are the same, the answer would be positive. So I know the answer is positive, 6 times 3 is 18. Positive 18 would be the response. However, if you have numbers, two real numbers with different signs, when you multiply, the answer would be negative. For example, here, positive 2 times negative 5. Well, I got different signs. I know the answer is negative. 2 times 5 is 10, so just write negative 10. Or negative 7 times positive 2. Well, my signs are different. That means my answer is negative, 7 times 2, 14, so I get negative 14. A little rule that I would suggest to remember on top of this, because see, these questions, this rule, these two rules they give you only address when you have two numbers in the problem. But what if you're multiplying three, four, five numbers? I wrote this little note, and I would suggest you get this in your notes. If you have no negatives or an even number of negatives in a multiplication problem, that means your answer is going to be positive. You notice here I had no negatives, positive answer. You notice here I had an even number of negatives, and what I'm pointing to here, I had two negatives. That's an even amount. If you have an even number of negatives in a multiplication problem, your answer will work positive. On the other hand, if you have an odd number of negatives in a multiplication problem, you will always get a negative answer. Here would be an example. I had an odd amount of negatives. I have one negative in the problem. My answer is negative. Over here, I have one negative in the problem. My answer is negative. Here would be some examples. This first example, do you notice my answer has to be negative? I only have one negative in the problem. And then 3 times 6 is 18, so I get negative 18. Or look at this problem. I have two negatives in the problem. That's an even amount. That means my answer is positive. So now this is where, since we're multiplying, we can do it in any order we want. I guess I'll just do 2 times 5. That's 10. And the 10 times the 4 is 40. I ought to be getting positive 40 then. Or the next one. Can you see three negatives in the problem? That means my answer is negative. Three is an odd amount. And then I can just say, since my answer is negative, half of four is two, and two times three is six, I'm going to get negative six for that response. Let's have you try. Pause the video right here and try those. Okay, so. This first one, do you notice, we have two negatives, so the answer would be positive. 2 times four, 7 is 14, so we should be getting positive 14 out of that. The next problem, I have three negatives, so I immediately know the answer would be a negative answer. And we can work this out now. Half of 4 is 2. And 2 times 9 is 18, so my answer is going to be a negative 18. And the third problem, I have one negative in the problem. So I know the answer is negative. One's an odd amount. So 4 thirds times 3 would be 4. Let me show that on paper in case you're not following. 4 thirds times 3 over 1, right? And I can cancel the 3's, because 3 goes into a 3 once. Does everybody understand where I'm getting 4 out of that? So when you multiply these together, you're getting 4. And 4 times 7 is 28. You ought to be getting negative 28 there. 
we have properties of multiplication that we have to know. There's five of them listed. Some of these are similar to the addition properties we learned. The first multiplication property is called the commutative property. It's the same idea as the addition property with, that was commutative. If you rearrange the order when you multiply, you will still get the same answer. So you can change the order. Okay, so like example here. If I do 4 times negative 5, I get negative 20. But if I rearrange it into negative 5 times 4, I still get negative 20. That's an example of the commutative property. If I change the order, I still get the same answer when multiplying. Next property, the associative property. In this one, I can group differently and still get the same answer. That's what the associative property stands for. I can group differently. Let's try that or see it here. Here, if I group these numbers together first, negative 2 times 7 is negative 14, and negative 14 times 4 is negative 56. Let's see if I get the same answer if I group differently. 7 times 4 would be 28, and negative 2 times 28 would also get me negative 56. So if I group differently, I would still get the same answer. That's the associative property. The identity property. If I multiply a number by 1, I keep the identity of the number. It doesn't change. Here would be an example. Negative 5 times 1, it still works out to negative 5. The identity did not change. That's the third property to know. Identity property of multiplication. Uh, we have a multiplication property of zero. If you take a number and multiply it by zero, you get zero, like negative three times zero is zero. Any number times zero is zero. That's the multiplication property of zero. And maybe I should say this real quick. Because there's addition property, uh, let me say it again. Since there's a commutative property of addition, and a commutative or a associative property of addition and an identity property of addition. If it was a quiz, you've got to distinguish. Are we talking commutative property of addition or are we talking commutative property of multiplication? You want to add that of addition or of multiplication to be clear. Okay? We also have a property of negative one. If you multiply a number with negative one, you will get the opposite of the number. So here would be an example. If I take negative 2 and I multiply it by negative 1, that gives me the opposite of negative 2, which is positive 2. Okay? So one of the things they will ask you in the homework then, one of the things they'll ask, two kinds of problems basically today, they will ask you to identify the properties being used. And they will have you work on some problems where they actually have you multiply numbers. I won't have you use a calculator. And you want to work these out correctly without the calculator and get to the proper sign. So for some examples here, can you see why this is associative? The order didn't change, but I grouped differently. That's associative. I'm grouping differently. Can you see a number times 0 is 0? That's the multiplication property is 0. Or here, do you see how I change the order? Negative 6 times y is the same as y times negative 6. That's the commutative property. Do you see how they wrote of multiplication? We want to put that because isn't there a, a commutative property of addition? We, we want to make clear it's multiplication property. 9 times negative 1 would give me the opposite of 9. That's the multiplication property of negative 1. And here, if I take a number and multiply it by 1, I get that number. That's the identity property of multiplication. Let's pause for a minute and have you try. Okay, we're back. Um, the first property. Can you see how we're taking a number and multiplying it by negative, by negative 1? And we get the opposite answer. That would be called the multiplication property of negative 1. I'm taking a number, multiplying it by negative 1, getting the opposite answer. Here in number 5, can you see how I change the order? 
That's the commutative property of multiplication. So let me I'll just arrow down here. That's commutative. Over here, the order didn't change, but I'm grouping different. That's the associative property of multiplication at work in number six. Seven, I'm taking a number, multiplying it by zero, and it gives me zero for an answer. That's the multiplication property of zero for number seven. Eight, can you see how we switched the order? The, whenever you switch the order, that's commutative property of multiplication. So I'm just going to maybe highlight in blue and arrow it down. That's the commutative property at work. And nine, I'm taking a number, multiplying it by negative one, and getting the opposite amount. That was the multiplication property of negative one. Okay? That's the video. If you have questions, make sure you ask during class time.